Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we discussed the functions of the oral cavity and then also how food, that is a bolus of food, moves from the oral cavity into the oropharynx, down the laryngopharynx, and then we briefly mentioned the esophagus. So let's actually pick up here with the esophagus. So I've had my bolus of food. It's now gone through the oropharynx, down the laryngopharynx, and I need to get that food into the esophagus. Okay? But I also don't want that food to go into the respiratory tract. And really the larynx is kind of where the opening of the respiratory tract is into the trachea. So I gotta do two things. One, I have to get food down the esophagus, but I also wanna prevent it from going down the respiratory tract. And let's first talk about how that occurs, okay? So let's actually zoom in right here up at the top. All right, this structure right here is not labeled, okay? But it's an important structure. Not sure why they didn't label it here. It's called the upper esophageal sphincter, okay? And it plays an important role in opening up of the esophagus, okay? If we look at this picture, this actually displays it a little bit better. What we notice is that the respiratory tract, that is the trachea, is held open permanently, okay? You don't want the trachea closing, right? Because you have to constantly get air in, right? We're not constantly eating or swallowing. So, when we're not swallowing, the trachea is open, of course, it's always open, but notice that the esophagus, which lies posterior to it, is collapsed. You almost can't even see the esophagus right here because it's so collapsed. That's what we actually have at rest when we're not eating or swallowing, okay? The esophagus is collapsed and the trachea is held open permanently, a term we call patent, okay? Like a patent, a patent office, it's patent. It is open permanently. We always want that. But if we want to swallow, we need to force food down into the esophagus. And that process, called deglutition, which is swallowing, is regulated by the upper esophageal sphincter. The upper esophageal sphincter is a layer of skeletal muscle right here. And so whenever you swallow, you have a bolus of food here in the laryngopharynx, okay? The upper esophageal sphincter opens and it allows the passage of food through it. If this upper esophageal sphincter is closed, you don't get movement into here, you don't get swallowing. So you have to consciously swallow to open this sphincter and allow the food through it. It's like a gateway. And so that being said, this is under conscious control, and that's why this sphincter up here, the upper esophageal sphincter, is skeletal muscle. But when you swallow, something else happens that's important, okay? There's another structure, which you can actually see a little bit better here. I like this. This little flap right here, this is what's called the epiglottis. When you swallow, I mentioned the other thing you don't want to happen is food to go down the respiratory tract. So what's nice is, is when you consciously swallow, this epiglottis will actually fold down and kind of lay over the opening of the respiratory tract. That's important because as food is moving down here and into the esophagus, if this was left open, then food would also go down here into the trachea, perhaps. Okay? So when you swallow, the epiglottis will actually kind of, it doesn't contract, but it will kind of fold over the opening of the trachea right here, and it will prevent food from going down in. Okay, so those two things have to happen when you swallow. You have to open the upper esophageal sphincter and you have to fold the epiglottis over the opening of the respiratory tract, okay? Now, once that happens, the bolus of food then moves into the esophagus, okay? So that's where we're gonna, we're gonna pick up right now. So we're gonna have food now, a bolus of it, that is, in the esophagus. Now. The lining of the esophagus is smooth muscle, okay? And we're gonna see what's called peristalsis. Peristalsis, what it is, is the rhythmic contraction of smooth muscle that moves a bolus of food down this pipe, okay? So 
what's happening is the smooth muscle in here is contracting little bits at a time and it's forcing the food unidirectionally down into the stomach. The way to kind of conceptualize what peristalsis is, is basically when you're brushing your teeth, hopefully you brush your teeth, and you've got a tube of toothpaste and you've used most of that tube, how do you get the rest of that toothpaste out? Right, to put it on the toothbrush. You kind of have to squeeze it from the base of the, of the toothpaste dispenser and kind of squeeze it out toward the opening and eventually you'll get some out. That's kind of what peristalsis is. And what's important to understand about the esophagus, I didn't understand this when I was a kid, uh, but you should now, the esophagus, that is movement of food through it, is not dependent on gravity, okay? it actually is completely dependent on the contraction of these smooth muscles. To illustrate this for yourself, if you can, and we used to do this as a kid all the time, but we didn't think about it, is put something in your mouth, chew it, and get ready to swallow it. But then do a headstand. So turn your body 180 degrees upside down. Now your head's on the floor, now your feet are up in the air, and swallow. And that food will go into your stomach. That tells you one thing. This movement of the bolus from... Uh, the upper esophageal sphincter down into the stomach is not gravity dependent. Okay? If it were gravity dependent, it would just fall right back down and it would never make its way into the stomach while you're upside down. So that peristalsis is very, very important. Now we got this bolus of food moving via peristalsis by the smooth muscle in the esophageal wall. Okay? And eventually that bolus is going to make its way to this sphincter, which is labeled down here for some reason. It is the lower esophageal sphincter. This esophageal sphincter is not under voluntary control. Think about it. You control swallowing, which moves food through the upper esophageal sphincter. So this one up here has to be skeletal muscle and under voluntary control. But do you actually consciously think about moving food through the lower esophageal sphincter into the stomach? No. And so this sphincter down here is smooth muscle and under involuntary control. And it relaxes and opens whenever it gets the stimulus of food kind of right in this area. It'll open and allow the bolus to enter the stomach. Okay. So this one down here is under involuntary control and it is smooth muscle. You don't have to consciously think about opening the lower esophageal sphincter. As we'll see in the stomach video, it actually has another name. It's also called the cardiac sphincter because the upper region of the stomach right here is called the cardia. Okay, So this is also called the cardiac sphincter. Now, the lower esophageal sphincter or cardiac sphincter is very important in preventing the backflow of stuff in the stomach. We're going to see in the stomach video that this substance in here that looks very liquidy and nasty, this is actually called chyme. Once it gets mixed in the stomach, the bolus is no longer a bolus. When the bolus gets mixed up in here, it becomes what's called chyme, and it's very acidic. And so one of the things about the lower esophageal sphincter is it's designed to allow only one-way movement, movement of the bolus from the esophagus into the stomach. And under normal conditions, this chyme shouldn't move back up from the stomach through the lower esophageal sphincter into the esophagus. That should not happen. But occasionally it does for different reasons. And when this occurs, chyme will move back from the stomach through the lower esophageal sphincter into the esophagus, and it can eventually make its way up here. And when that occurs, it's called acid reflux. And it's very unhealthy over time because it can actually cause cancer. And the reason for that is because this chyme is very acidic. So when it comes up here, it damages the lining of the esophagus. Remember the esophagus is made of stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, um, We talked about that in the tissue video. So stratified squamous epithelium, at least the basal layer, is mitotically active because you have to be able to replace these cells as they're sloughed off. And so if you damage this, you may damage and cause mutations in the basal layer of those cells, and that can cause ca cancers to form. So acid reflux is not a very, it's not a benign disease. Over time, it can cause serious problems, okay? So before we conclude this video, I want to mention a couple of things about the esophagus that's very important to understand. The esophagus, like the pharynx, is really just a passageway. Okay? It's a passageway. There is no digestion that occurs in the esophagus. 
There is no absorption that occurs in the esophagus. It is simply a passageway to move food, that is a bolus, from the oral cavity in the pharynx and then into the stomach. Okay? No digestion and absorption occurs here. Okay? But it is a regulated passageway, regulated by both the upper esophageal sphincter and the lower esophageal sphincter. Okay? And also the epiglottis, which we can see a little bit better here, which is this flap that when you swallow closes over the opening of the respiratory tract and prevents food from going in. So this is actually why if you start laughing while you're eating, you might actually inhale a little bit when you're laughing and you will not swallow. And so you won't get that epiglottis cover in the opening of the respiratory tract, which is why when some people laugh and they're eating, they start choking. Some food actually manages to make its way down into there. And of course, you have to do the Heimlich maneuver and all that stuff, or at least cough it up. All right. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the esophagus. And in the next video, we're going to pick up with the anatomy and physiology of the stomach. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.